If you love train travel, hit that subscribe button. We upload at least once a week, and this way you won't miss any of our content. You can also join our community on Patreon. Your support gives you access to cool features such as early video releases. And finally, follow us on our social media, Instagram and TikTok. Hi everyone, it's me Tom. It's a cold day here in Chicago, Illinois, but we've had a lot of fun seeing all the sights. Like this, this is called Art on the Mart. It's a projection onto a building on the Chicago River. It's a really cool sight to see, so if you're in Chicago, definitely check it out. Now, if you remember from the fall, I took Amtrak Southwest Chief here from Chicago to Los Angeles. Today, we're riding Amtrak again, this time going the other way to New York. That's right, we're riding the Lakeshore Limited from Chicago Union Station to Penn Station in New York City, and I'm so excited. The train leaves in about an hour, but first let me introduce my fellow passengers. We have my lovely wife, Lindsay, and my awesome brother, Bear. Woo! They're joining me on the Lakeshore Limited today. Let's go to Union Station. Here's Union Station. Now Union Station has something really cool inside in the Great Hall, so let's go check that out. Although we're halfway through February now, when we shot this video it was only two days after Christmas, so Union Station's famous Christmas tree was standing tall and proud in the Great Hall. If you take a closer look at this Christmas tree, it's train themed. Now this New York Central one is cool because the train we're taking follows the old New York Central route. Now during Christmas time, Amtrak also has the Polar Express experience where parents and kids get to ride an Amtrak train and actually get hot chocolate and have different scenes from the movie reenacted. That is definitely on my list to do, maybe next year. The station building at Union Station was built in 1925 and will celebrate its centennial soon. Isn't that Christmas tree so cool? It is super warm in here. Now, before we board the train, which is in an hour and a half, we have to pick up one of our bags. You see, Lindsay and I came into Chicago this morning at about nine o'clock, and the train leaves at 9.30 in the evening. Now, you don't wanna lug a heavy bag. So what you can do is go to the parcel check counter and check in your bag. It costs $10, and this is what that was like this morning. All right, to drop off your bag, you have to follow the signs that say to all trains. Now Amtrak lets all passengers check bags to and from major stations, and the parcel check counter is hidden kind of behind the big baggage check. We got one bag for the Lakeshore Limited. $10. We are business class, we're a coach. So? Okay. You got a bag? Yep. Perfect. <laughs> hey, Lens, do you mind if I ask you, how did you like the parcel check service? It was great. Super easy. They're really nice. And you can pick it up whenever you need it. $10 is totally worth it. It was super easy they were super friendly like Lindsay said and it was just literally a weight off our shoulders for today 9 30 lakeshore limited new york boston i'll explain the two different destinations later but look at that it doesn't say anything on this side it, it doesn't say anything on this side but it does say delayed on that side Bro, this is the first station it leaves from. How could it be delayed? I don't know. Just sitting there in this magnificent hall, Christmas instrumental music playing, the lights are dim. It is so relaxing. I know it's probably nothing compared to train travel a long time ago, but I almost feel sort of like united with the travelers of the past through this experience, if that makes sense. I like flying decently, but let me tell you, I've never seen an airport like this. 
So in a previous video, I went to the Metropolitan Lounge right there. So check it out to find out what it's like and if it's... So we're here by the big Amtrak map again. Time to show you our route. So we're starting here in Chicago, passing through South Bend, sleeping through Ohio, going up through Erie, upstate New York, let's make sure you can see that, Albany, then down the Hudson River Valley into New York City. Before you board your Amtrak train, you have to make your way to the newer and uglier waiting area in front of the tracks. Granted, this part of Union Station does look a little bit more like an airport. To add to that airport vibe, this lady was massaging her husband's feet, and over in the corner somewhere, one lady was playing Candy Crush at volume a million. I needed some fresh air, so I decided to go to the bathroom. But while I was peeing, this dude just grabbed my shoulder and started talking to me. So obviously I have my boarding pass and my phone wallet, but Bear showed me a cool way to have it printed for like a scrapbook. So if you want a ticket like this, a physical paper copy, really a souvenir, what you gotta do is you gotta find me one of these machines and then right there you gotta click on modify trip and then manual keyboard entry and then it's A, well, 47, 47. C. C. Sick. Oh, there you have it. Boarding soon. How are you feeling? Excited. What side of the train should we sit on? The right. The reason we're picking the right side to sit on is for the views of the Hudson River later on in New York. So we're standing in line for the Lakeshore Limited. I think the Empire Builder just arrived very delayed. And so they're letting all those people use the passage first and then we can get on our train? Question mark. Here we go. Oh, you can see Chicago. Here's some view liners for the sleeper portion. That is out of our price range. I guess it's the The back one? The sleeper. Yeah. It's gorgeous. seats. All right. So the way boarding works in Amtrak coach class is that you have a reservation but it's not tied to a specific seat. You get to choose your seat but then that seat is yours for the rest of the trip. So Bear is sitting back there. Lindsay and I have two seats right up here. Let's see what we got. The only thing we want to sit is no one else. Sit. The curtains. 
for sleepy time. We have some different buttons that I'm not going to push yet because I don't want to hit Baron. <laughs> um, he can be hit. Classic Amtrak footrest, which I prefer to sleep without, but you might actually like that. And they have um, these are types of leg rests, so they go more oh, yeah. flat, so it's not just your sheet moving back. It's a little bit nicer. Okay, yeah, no, I like them. I like their color too. Yeah, they look very. So this knob does the footrest thing or the leg rest. This one must be reclined. Let's try it out. <laughs> that is a nice yeah, recline. Oh. <laughs> and then finally, reading lights. Because this is Amtrak, they'll be turning the lights off at 10. Now, before we head out and it's quiet time, let me explain the Lakeshore Limited a little bit. Um, it's split into two parts, the 48 and the 448. We're on the 48, which goes to Penn Station in New York. Up front is the 448, which is actually going to Boston. So in Albany, this train will split. The Boston section leaves first, and then they have a different locomotive attached to our train, and then we'll go down the Hudson River Valley to New York City. 53 minutes late, we are departing Union Station. Look to the left here. Since we shot this video, these Midwest Venture cars have now entered service between Chicago and St. Louis. Are you comfortable, sweetie? I am. Where'd you score that pillow? Target. Behind our coach car was the Viewliner restaurant car. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, coach passengers are not allowed in the restaurant. Be warned at all times while on Amtrak train. You're one and only exception to that rule is if you're actually eating or drinking. The coach cars in both the New York and the Boston sections are made out of Amfleet 2 trains. These trains were built in the 1980s and have that distinctive round cylinder shape. And to stretch our legs before going to sleep, we decided to walk through a few of those cars. So this is what they look like. It's very dark out. That's because it is 10.30 central time or 11.30 eastern time. Our first stop will be South Bend, Indiana in about an hour and a half and I don't think any of us are gonna stay up for that. Good night, Linz. I'll see you in upstate New York. Good night, Linz. I'll see you in upstate New York. Don't say that. Good morning, everyone. So I had played around with the idea of waking up in Cleveland, Ohio to see the station there, but my body had other plans. And honestly, with still a full day of riding this train ahead of us, that probably wasn't a bad idea. So we slept through the entire state of Ohio and Erie, Pennsylvania, and woke up right around the border with New York and Pennsylvania. The first station stop was Buffalo Depew, 
one of two train stations in Buffalo and where our train connects to the Empire service trains to Niagara Falls and even Toronto. Hey guys, good morning. We are in upstate New York. Just left Rochester. Um, I slept decently, I think Lindsay did too. Um, I'm in the bathroom now, just brush my teeth, about to stretch my legs and maybe walk to the cafe. I'll do a bathroom review later, this one's just kind of gross. Um, I feel like it's a different crowd on this train compared to the Southwest Chief. Well, the Southwest Chief after Albuquerque was maybe more like this. Just, I feel like people are slightly more inconsiderate, like at 1.30, some of us had to ask this group of people that was talking very loudly if maybe they could hold their conversation a little bit more quietly. There's people that like aren't even wearing masks, including the attendant. So, but the seats are comfy. The views are just gonna get better and better. Um, the climate in the train is nice. Like it's not too warm, not too cold. And it's Amtrak. Gotta love it. Now in the cafe car, we were met with our next disappointment. There was one other family in the cafe eating food and we sat down contemplating what to order. And then the Amtrak staff asked all of us to leave. We asked why, and they said it because we were taking up space that other passengers should have been using. First of all, there were no other passengers and it felt kind of hypocrite that the Amtrak staff themselves were taking up so many tables and asking passengers to leave. I definitely filed a complaint to Amtrak. While I understand that passengers have to make room for other passengers, their behavior towards us paying customers seemed incredibly inappropriate in this situation. Anyways, let's do a toilet review now. So this is the bathroom in an M-Fleet 2. I think that round mirror is a nice touch. The first thing we notice right away is just the sheer amount of space. This is by far the best part about traveling with Amtrak is whether it's your seat or the bathrooms, you'll have enough space. Now everything was in working order, the power sockets, the water, the soap was stocked, even the toilet flushed for now. Although later on in the trip, all of the toilets in coach class were clogged because people threw paper towel in the toilets. This kind of reminded me of, I think it was third grade when I last heard a lecture on why not to throw paper towel in toilets. Anyways, if you think I sounded annoyed, you should have heard the conductor. There's also this thing in Amtrak bathrooms, which I don't know what it is or if I even should have touched it, but it's there in case you do know what it is. And it's a simple deadbolt lock that I've never had any trouble with. As we're heading east towards Albany, the view started improving. Like, for example, the views of Onondaga Lake on the left side of the train right before you arrive at Syracuse. We now make a brief stop at Syracuse Station. The tracks we're on are known as the Amtrak Empire Corridor. We share these trains with the Maple Leaf running to and from Toronto and by the New York State-sponsored Empire Service trains. The Lakeshore Limited skips three stops that the Empire Service does stop at, Rome, Amsterdam, and Hudson. These tracks are what was once the main line of the New York Central Railroad. Remember that railroad that had the little plaque in the Christmas tree at Union Station? The New York Central stretched from Boston and New York to Chicago and St. Louis, and the Lakeshore Limited follows much of the original route. I'm gonna go in with napkins. Speaking of the New York Central Railroad, as the Lakeshore Limited pulls into Utica, New York, we catch a glimpse of many different kinds of old passenger cars and locomotives that used to belong to the New York Central Railroad that are now part of the Adirondack Scenic Railway, including this steam engine.
The Adirondack Railroad operates both a dinner train from Utica as well as some seasonal train tours. I checked them out online. The tours are pretty pricey though. Although the United States doesn't prioritize trains nearly as much as other countries do, what I do find fascinating is how much attention and respect there is to railroad history and heritage. Along many Amtrak routes, you'll find so many old trains on display at the train stations. How's the view? Lindsay and I decided to try the cafe again, this time knowing in advance what we would order. The attendant was a lot nicer this time. He even cracked a few jokes with us. What'd you get? Grilled cheese. How, how do you like this Amtrak box? Now obviously buying food on board is expensive. The grilled cheese was $5.25 and the sodas were each $2.50. $10 for a very simple meal. But hey, you're eating on board a train. After Utica, our train closely parallels the Mohawk River, heading east towards Schenectady. Now, as we're moving alongside the Mohawk River, you might notice these bridge-like structures crossing the water. Take a closer look and you'll realize that they're not actually bridges, or at least not accessible ones. These are actually dams. They are lowered into the water in order to raise the water level and allow ships to cross the river. Now we're approaching Amsterdam Station. The Lakeshore Limited doesn't stop at Amsterdam, the Empire Service does. But what I thought was interesting to point out is that this train both passes through Amsterdam and passes close to a town called Rotterdam. This being a trip I have done in the Netherlands many times myself. Soon after Amsterdam, the train slows into Schenectady. This town with the crazy spelling is home to about 66,000 people and was founded by Dutch settlers in the 17th century. Now the word Schenectady comes from the Mohawk word that means beyond the pines and was actually what the Mohawk called modern day Albany. It's a cute looking city and this station offers a transfer to the Ethan Allen Express towards Vermont or the Adirondack towards Montreal in Canada. The stop after Schenectady is Albany, and here at Albany the train will be making some interesting maneuvers, eventually splitting up the train between a Boston and a New York section. Now we're going to cover all of that next week, including the final stretch from Albany down to New York City, which runs right on the banks of the Hudson River. Thanks so much for watching today, please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome, and I can't wait to show you part two of our journey next week.